Thank you for being here with me today. I'm here with Larry Sather, uh, who represented the 81st Legislative District, um, which encompassed Blair, Huntington, and Mifflin counties. That's and that correct. was uh, due to reapportionment, I think. Yes, absolutely. It was Blair and Huntington County originally. Well, I wanted to begin by asking you about your childhood and your family life. I had one. Great. I had a childhood. Uh, wonderful time. Uh, although I have to admit, uh, I was an uh, ailing person. I had asthma. I was an asthmatic. And for all those youngsters out there who have asthma, you know, you too can be a state representative uh, and play football if you want to. It's, it, there's a lot of things out on the marketplace. But I, I had an interesting childhood, uh, born in 1940. And uh, I can remember some paper drives, even uh, as about a four or five year old. Um, and a lot of the, my mother and father had a mom and pop grocery store. And my father was a fourth or fifth class postmaster in the village where we lived. And uh, occasionally I would get the opportunity to get down to the, to the railroad station of a, a train that would come through and drop, drop off the mail pouch. And, uh, and and go down and, and pick it up, and then he'd come, he'd come up and sort through it in the post office section of our of our uh, store and post office. Um, you know, Tom Mix was was the rage as a uh, at, at, at the, in those cowboy movies, and uh, I routinely went into the nearest town that had a theater in Huntington, and either went to the Clifton or the Grand Theater or both to the matinees. There were some matinees at that time. If you paid a quarter or more, I think that was about it. Um, my t I w was schooled not, uh, like at walking distance to the school uh, and uh, tried to compete as often as I could in some of the sports, baseball especially. And then later on, I played, uh, then they didn't have junior high football. I played uh, 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 grade school football, and we had a pretty good league. Uh, my my family, my mother and father were good mothers, mother and father. Uh, my father came to this country from Norway, never talked much about the old country, but uh, he wanted to be as American as any uh, native-born uh, uh, American could be. Uh, my mother was, you know, Pennsylvania Dutch. Uh, in, in the in the area of that of that where I where I'm from from the little village of McConnell's town, and uh, I can remember having a lot of potato soup, mashed potatoes, and if you didn't eat all the mashed potatoes, then you had potato cakes, and my father could raise uh, potatoes that you wouldn't believe, uh, just from the peelings of a potato. Uh, and if he planted, if he could find an eye, he would plant it. And we had row after row of potatoes. And I didn't know it at the time, but uh, uh, we, we were doing composting, which is a excellent thing to do even today, because most of the garbage that was could be uh, was placed back in the garden and tilled into the, into the soil, and and helped uh, actually nurture the, the next uh, round of, of crops out of that, out of that garden. We, ha we had, uh, my father raised uh, hogs, pigs, and every uh, Thanksgiving the, uh, there was a, a celebration. People would come in to, from the area, would, would help out, and then have a butchering of, of hogs. That, those are the things that I can remember. And first polio immunization came about. Uh, I, I didn't like shots in any form. But, uh, but that one seemed to be one that I should participate in and did. I don't think he had any choice. Mm -hmm. I had a good childhood. I had, you know, a sister, an older sister. I hope she watches this someday and when she re I refer to an older sister. <laughs> um, and we've always had a, a good, good relationship, uh, except when I was a very young, young youngster. Uh, everywhere she went, Larry had to go, you know, and she had to take me along. Would you say you came from a political family? My, my father thought it was uh, un-American if you didn't vote or vote. You know, the only thing he had any problems with was V's and W's. Uh, 
but he, uh, he, he, he voted and mother voted. But as far as uh, a, a committee person uh, in, that, in that regard, no, they, they were not really a, a political family. Uh, no, I, I had no thoughts, no aspirations if you were to tell me that I was going to be involved in politics, not, not in those days. So how did you decide to become a Republican? Well, my father and mother were Republican. Uh, and, and, at, and at that time, in that community, uh, and it still is, rather heavy Republican area. Um, so I initially, I, joined, I became a Republican because of family and the community. But later on, later on, it, uh, you learn more about values. Uh, well, that's what it's what growing up's all about, going to school. And, but uh, learn more about values and uh, and and concepts, and 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 uh, what what you stand for. <coughs> and it appeared to me that I fit the mold more of a Republican than a than of a Democrat. And to this day, it's, I still have a lot of good Democratic friends, you know, and. I can trust them as deeply and as long as I can the Republicans that I call my friends. Could you tell me a little bit about your education and your careers prior to coming to the House? Sure. Uh, high, you know, my, my final was 12th grade. I didn't have a higher education. Uh, it's one of my regrets, but uh, I spent time in the, in the Woodcock Valley Elementary School. Uh, for eight years, and uh, then went on to the Huntington Area High School, and spent four years there, and, and graduated in the class of 1959 uh, with a commercial diploma. I was figured I'm going into business. It didn't appear to me that family <coughs> and fortunes, uh, that college was going to happen. Uh, if I knew then what I found out since, I'd have probably qualified for many grants and loans. But, uh, so anyhow, Huntington High School was my uh, 12th, 12th, 12 years. Uh, I had some uh, uh, work that I did on my own, uh, no degree, but uh, on small business administration, small business uh, through Penn State University, they came into town and offered some classes. and. Uh, uh, I thought it, it fit because I was going into business in, in the community. In fact, I think at that time that I was involved, I was managing uh, a uh, furniture department at that time. Um, but that, and, and then, uh, right out of high school, you know, I was hired by a hardware store and, and worked for about a year, about a year in that capacity in hardware. And an opening was coming up by a retirement in the furniture department. And uh, I was asked if I would be interested. And I said, well, is there a few more dollars involved? I started out in 1959 in the hardware department of that establishment, making $76.76 every two weeks. Uh, so you had to manage money, budget it. And, uh, I was advised about this this promotion that would be available, and uh, and it, there was there was additional pay. I think it, I I always referred to it as it gave me the opportunity and money to buy a few white shirts and bow ties because at that time they wore bow ties, and uh, that worked out well. I I was, I was a, a sales clerk salesman in the furniture department, and one day I walked in and. There was no manager. <clears throat> I was called to the office and advised that I was going to be managing the furniture department at about 20 years of age, or yeah, probably 20 years of age. Um, that was real in interesting, and I uh, I worked at it. I worked at it and made it productive. Won some awards because of the sales activity of the department and my own personal. Uh, and then we, you know, decided to move on, and moved on to an assistant manager position in furniture in Greensburg, Pennsylvania. And uh, you talk about the melting pot of Pennsylvania <coughs> or the United States. 
I was exposed to it for the first time, and it was a delightful experience. So uh, that's that was the early begin the time of uh, for me it was was business activity, mm -hmm. and uh, I guess maybe some of my typing sk skills and bookkeeping ability, <coughs> you know, helped out. But uh, I guess a lot of my credit came from wonderful teachers that I had, uh, including, ele I mean, elementary right up through, th th through high school. And uh, some of them are still with us yet today. And uh, they, they did their work. They did it. They did the job. Uh, all I wanted to do was play ath be involved in athletics. And they had to every once in a while bring me back down to earth about academia. And they did a good job. Could you tell me about um, your political runs before you came to the House? Sure. Uh, well, the first was not a run. I was appointed. Um, two classmates of mine from Huntington High were township supervisors. And a vacancy occurred. And they wanted to know if I would be interested in filling the remainder of that term as a township supervisor. And I, so well, I need to think about it a little bit. I think maybe one day or two at the most. Uh, it was a township then and still is with growth, not to the not to the magnitude of some of the southeastern municipal governments, but it 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 was it was having growth, and that growth needed to be managed wisely. And uh, so I said yes. And then I found out what all that involved, and uh, mainly roads, you know, the township roads, but also uh, eventually got into uh, s some issues of uh, other other management opportunities, and uh, they formed a they, the townships surrounding Angboros, formed a cog, a council of governments. I, came, I became very involved in that and finally became chairman of it for a year or two. And we looked at uh, regional police departments. Uh, we were looking at recreational programs that we could jointly, uh, you know, work them out for uh, participating townships and boroughs and joint purchase programs that we had even, even in that time. So uh, that was a township super supervisor for... Uh, I think it was uh, four years. Then I was, uh, or two years, I filled out that term. Then I was elected. I decided to seek the office. And I was elected uh, for another six-year term. But during that period of time, uh, uh, a re-election was coming up for county commissioner, uh, the candidates. And so several of my friends said, uh, why don't you, you know, move up? Well, in that time, I didn't whether it was moving up or moving ladder or whatever, because township supervisor, they serve well. Those who serve, serve well, and, uh, and a very important purpose. But anyhow, I, I served as, I decided, okay, uh, you know, I'll throw my hat in the ring for county commissioner, and that was 1979. And uh, I, did, I, I wore out some shoes, leather, I mean, you, uh, you know, we didn't have television uh, in, in the community. We had uh, about 30 mile, 30, 30 mile from us. But basically, it was a knock on doors, uh, some radio commercials that I uh, had mentioned earlier to you when I sat down to do a commercial. And I had the script pretty much in front of me, and, and I, was the, I was cued that, <coughs> that, you know, we're ready to go. And the individual who was doing the taping said, I'm going to, we'll try it with some music background. I thought, okay, that's fine. And I'm all of a sudden, I hear this da, 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 you know, hell to the chief. And I said, I, I, I cracked up. I, mean, I, I, I said to him, I said, isn't that a little bit much, you know? And he said, I was just testing. You know, I think he wanted to loosen me up, maybe. He loosened me up all right. So anyhow, uh, I, I did, a ta did several tapings like that. Anyhow, uh, I, we formed a, a committee, 
a very wonderful group of volunteer individuals who believed in me. I don't, you know, I don't know what it was, but but they believed in me, and uh, we we uh, we did all right. Election we were paper ballots, and there's still paper ballots in in my home county today. Mm -hmm. But the I was I was leading not by much, but I was leading, and there was only there was one more precinct to come in. That a precinct arrived at about eight o'clock the next morning. You know, election day, elect through the night, and and, and uh, when that election precinct came in, uh, one other gentleman had one more vote than I did. So I, the unofficial, the unofficial count showed I had lost by one vote. And then they did the, as required by law, they did the official count on Friday of that week. And there was back and forth. There were some errors. They decided to open up some ballot boxes to find out why the tally sheets didn't agree. And I was involved. I was asked to be there, and other candidate involved was there. And it bounced around. <clears throat> but anyhow, uh, the outcome was uh, it, it switched, and I was declared the winner by two votes. And uh, I thought, gee, that's, that's great, you know. Uh, but something else took place. The other gentleman hired an attorney who decided to open up so many ballot boxes, and uh, it was uh, a learning experience. We had previously agreed what constituted a spoiled ballot, uh, he and his attorney, uh, and I, I had someone there. Uh, they found eight ballots that specimen A, B, C, you know, and, and took it to the court. <coughs> and uh, the court ruled that these ballots should be counted. So I lost by six votes. Uh, the other gentleman was on the ballot. I was off the ballot in the fall. Well, my wife and I, who has been very, very, very staunch supporter, she doesn't say a whole lot. She doesn't go out on the political scene as often. Uh, but we said, well, this is our year that we're going to run so it's over. And uh, so we spent a little more money and time and ran an, a writing campaign. We're off the ballot. And uh, the people were concerned about using stickers. So they, the ads that we ran encouraged people to write their name in and also then put, if they wanted to, put the sticker on top uh, because occasionally the stickers would come off you'd find them in the ballot box. After election night was over, uh, I was declared the winner. In fact, I was the top vote getter. Uh, so somebody believed in me and somebody with a higher power than me <laughs> was looking down. But uh, it worked out well. Uh, I served 12 years, 11 months as a county commissioner. I was chairman of the board 12 years, 11 months. And uh, a lot of things we initiated that I could go into detail that would take probably an hour just to do that. But we did. We started some, some good things in Huntington County at that time. And about that time along came Human Service Development Funding. Uh, we started a, a, our separate department for that because I didn't realize when I sought the office how much of the, of the pie chart of our dollars were going for human services. And uh, again, you have to, have to ma manage your money wisely, and especially with all the mandates from state government. And the fact that the money doesn't always flow as expeditiously as you would hope. Sometimes you get paid for uh, the previous quarter, two quarters down the road, <laughs> and cash flow could be a problem. But anyhow, I, I served 12 years, 11 months as a county commissioner. And uh, then my good friend in the House, Sam Hayes, uh, a leader and an excellent leader uh, who had 20 years of service, at that time had declared with a one-paragraph statement that he was not seeking re-election. 
I got a call at like 7 o'clock in the morning from the media. Was I aware of this? I said, no. I said, and they said, well, why are you surprised? I said, nothing in politics should surprise me, but yes, that does, because he had given no indication. So I contacted Sam. I called him that morning, same time. I said, is this for real? He says, my friend, he says, yeah, I'm going to move on to other things. And I said, well, I'm, I know you, I'm, sure, I know you, I'm pretty sure you're aware that I was interested. He said, yes, and not that I'd ever ran, would run against him. <laughs> uh, but uh, I said, so I'd like to throw my hat in the ring, and I'd like to do a, have a press conference tomorrow morning, be quick out of the gate. He said, my friend, you have so many weeks to circulate your petitions. I wish you the best of luck. So off we went. And then I got a couple calls from my friend. And I knew he was being bothered, bothered, and uh, pre a lot of pressure. And finally, after the third call, when he called me, he said, I'm going to have to get back in the race. I said, Sam, I don't, I don't doubt that. You know, you've been our guy on the Hill for 20 years. So he became a candidate. Well, I might have, I could have, should have packed up my bag then, but that wasn't my nature. And I'd already done the circulation of petitions. And uh, so I was still on the ballot, but I didn't get that many votes. And Sam won another two-year term. But at the end of the next term, his next term, uh, in 91, uh, well, 92, he uh, chose not, he, and he said, I'm not going to, this is it. So I I got involved, and two other Republicans got involved, and one Democrat, and uh, we went at it again on issues, not personalities, on issues. And uh, I beat out the other two on the Republican ticket, so I became the Republican nominee. And that November, in the face-off with the Democrat, I was a top vote-getter. And uh, here I am, arriving in 1993, with the class of 1993. So what were your issues whenever you first ran for the House? Some of the ones that we're still faced with today. Tax relief. Uh, the other one of them had to do with uh, some changes in Act Six, the auto insurance reform bill. You know the, the package of bill, the eight bills that they ran, and uh, I think they passed in '90. Uh, and economic development was a lot of the a lot of mine because. Huntington County, now I'm running from Huntington County, but the, the 81st District was Huntington and Blair, a portion of Blair County. Uh, but Huntington County's unemployment rate has been high. Uh, many of the things uh, that other areas were able to grasp onto uh, during the changing years, uh, such as interstates, and uh, some of the larger corporations passed us by for whatever reason. You know, shame on us, shame on them, uh, because we thought we had a, a gift. We, th we had something to offer. Uh, that was coming out of the county commissioner time that I spent. We a, built a shell building that we, you know, had, we filled it up. But anyhow, uh, Economic development was a, was a lot of it, and then transportation to move those goods and services. We needed to open up the, the market, the area, and uh, and some things did happen. Mm -hmm. I was uh, appointed to the State Transportation Commission and had the opportunity to hear testimony as well as give testimony and, and push for projects in the 81st Legislative District. That was prior. So uh, I think that pretty much sum, sums it up. I want, I, you know, so many of the young people were leaving the area not by choice. 
some of the young people are continuing to leave the area and not by choice, but it's better. Uh, the, the area is more diversified as far as the economy, the base, and uh, I think that spells good news if they don't forget their mission. That's all. Did you like to campaign? Initially, yes, I did. Um, I was in sales. I was in the sales business. Well, I was selling either a product or a service. Now I'm selling me and what I think I can do. And yeah, I, I did. It was not a, it wasn't, in fact, I think that's what concerned some people who were long-term polit not long-term politicians, I don't mean elected, but who were in the power structure of the party politics had some concerns about because I, I, uh, I changed the terrain and uh, I, I believe I changed it for the better. I hope somewhere down the road somebody will say I changed it for the better. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, think we, I think we manage resources well. I think we manage uh, resources as to, you know, earthly possessions, but also the, you know, what we have to protect our land, mm -hmm. land and water. You started telling me a little bit about the 81st Legislative District. In your own words, um, how would you describe the people, the geography, the, the townships? Well, they want to work. They're not, you know, others were labeling, you know, writing them off because of the high unemployment that they didn't choose to look for work or want to work. That wasn't the case. But you have to have skills to work, you know, to find, you know, in the marketplace of today, uh, especially today. And it's ever changing the, the needs, the skills. And uh, our, I, I believe our vocational education, career technology schools, at that time were doing a reasonably good job, but weren't always, and I stated it, weren't always creating or, or charging them. And, educating them for the jobs of tomorrow. So we were, we were a little bit behind the curve, not ahead of it. And uh, that, that was, I think, a force that needed to, to happen. Um, but the people, are, you know, they're, they're free-thinking people. They, they, and they don't, you know, they're not, they're not the ones who have constantly had their hands out, but they're the ones who have had their one a hand up. And that's all I was trying to, to say. That's, that was the preaching I did uh, when I came here. We're, you know, we're, we're behind the curve, but we don't want a hand out. We want a hand up. And I think that played, that, that people understood what I was saying, because I wasn't alone. My, le my legislative district wasn't by itself. There were the Fayettes, the Greens, and other areas that were struggling as well. And, uh, but education, skills, training, that people were available for employment for the jobs of today and tomorrow. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, I, I wouldn't change districts. I changed districts because of reapportionment. Uh, and that was, that was fine. I knew Mifflin County. I, as a county commissioner, we had some joinder agreements that, uh, you know, three county, two county joinders and, and, and knew, uh, and the, uh, the area I got was very royal uh, to, uh, to add to my district. I lost some wonderful people up in Blair County who had to get to know me and trust me because Sam was their guy for 22 years. I didn't know whether it was really going to happen, but I sure set my heart on it, mm -hmm. and I believe it happened because those people said the same thing when I left the district, when I left that their their area, because I had to move on to uh, Mif Mifflin County. They they said the same things about me. That that was good. You know, you don't you don't get too many pats on the back, nor nor should you. You know, you you knew if you don't know what the job is when you. When you take it on, when you when you seek it, you're you're going to find out in a hurry. 
Could you um, tell me how long did it take you to travel from one part of your district to the to the other end? You talked about the roads. <laughs> <laughs> well, from Shank, yeah, from down in Dublin uh, up to Warriors Mark, and then back into into Tyrone area and Snyder, Sinking Valley. Originally, uh, it was a pretty good hoof, <laughs> and. Uh, I'm, I'm thinking you could probably ride, ride two hours, maybe more, yeah, from one point to the other point. And it's no less, so now uh, with, with the Mifflin County portion. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it, it's uh, a little bit of this, a little bit of that, you know. I don't have any cities. I have boroughs and townships. Uh, so that, you know, you know I didn't have any third-class cities to to think about and understand their needs as I was looking at, looking towards the boroughs and townships and their problems. Mm -hmm. How was the best way to reach your constituents then? The best way to reach them? Well, to reach them yeah. in mass was the mailers. To make, I made sure that, I made sure, I had <laughs> my staff made sure. <laughs> That I made sure, <laughs> you know, I've I've been very thankful for the staff that I've had. They've made me look good. And uh, but mailers, the mass mailer pieces that I know some people, you know, I, I get a few sent back to me. Don't send me any more of these, you know, or or it's taxpayer expense or something like that. But it was the only way when you say to the constituents. Yeah, I, I can get out and see so many people every day that I'm not in session. Uh, but you get spread kind of thin now, especially with three counties. Uh, if there's a 4-H function in one, there's a 4-H function in the others. If there's an FFA, and I, I forget how many 20-some fire companies, and being a former fire chief, you know, I, I didn't miss these events. I, I went. I went. But uh, it, 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 was, it was good experience. I, I don't regret any of it. Don't regret any of it. Do you have a website? Yes, I forget. The, I forget I, my staff's not here to tell you what it is. <laughs> uh, somewhere I, I should have written it on my hand, maybe. I <laughs> could have given it to you. Um, so technology is something that's um, coming into politics as well. Oh, I my. Um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, the, the website. In fact, my youngest grandson said, "Pap, you got to keep, you got to change that picture." <laughs> yeah, it was, it, w it was getting a little old, uh, and and wasn't as. I don't know whether any picture of me would be favorable, but, but the one that was there for a good while wasn't that favorable, and, and what you're doing, you know, you need to tell more of you, of the story of what legislation and and the things that you're active in. So the public needs to know that. He was right, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, he's going to take up poli sci in college, in addition to, in addition to business, finance, and so on and so forth. So, uh, yeah, it's ch it's changing, and uh, I can minimally use my computer. I know how to push help, you know, or exit. Yeah, <laughs> those are my two favorite ones. Uh, but it's ne it's absolutely it's necessary, mm -hmm. and. Uh, I, I, in the early days, I used uh, the television, then I failed to use it at times when I should have. But with me, it was go see the people, mm -hmm. go see the, at these events. You know, oh, there's Larry. It wasn't like, oh, gee, how'd he make it? You know, I was there. I was there. Mm -hmm. well, well, you talked a, a little bit about um, Sam Hayes being yes. being the uh, representative prior to you uh, coming to the house. What was it like? serving, I guess, in his shadow, you know. Well, as I said, uh, Sam had the best of both worlds, all worlds. Um, he was an educator. And he, 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 would, he could deal with you as a you know, student, here, a classroom. And uh, it was very good. At it. He was very effective. He also had the best of all worlds in that in Huntington County he was in the minds of all he was a Huntington County boy 
when in reality he lived in, well, his homestead was in Huntington County. It really was he there. But uh, he, was, he was a Blair County resident. Uh, you know, I, I don't think most people even knew that or cared. You know, I don't, I don't or cared where he was from. So he, he had this persona, I mean, that Sam, Sam Hayes. And I don't know how he managed it. He had no district offices. But he sure had a staff in Harrisburg that better know every tree, every dog. <laughs> Maybe not that extreme. But, but all the geographic of, of his legislative district. And it was not unusual. But you made a phone call, you got Sam. And uh, I think as things materialized and, and the growth in government operations, uh, I don't see how I could have functioned without a district office. And I've, I've had district office in each of the counties from day one. And a lot of what we do and what makes us shine, I mean, if I have any positive, you know, uh, aspects back home, it's because of what my district offices did for this person or that person. And people to this day, you know, come up and say, Larry, thank you very much for what you did for me and for my family. Now, Sam ha heard the same thing, but he managed it through the Harrisburg office, and it just, it just magnified. It just got bigger and bigger and bigger. But Sam was... Uh, as I said, I'm not going to try and walk in his shoes, mm -hmm. and, you know, because there was many, and he said, he made a statement after the election was over, that there will be things that Larry can do and will be doing that I did not do, you know, and I didn't, I didn't seek out, maybe he didn't either, leadership. Uh, I wanted to get involved in some other, other areas of, of, of government. And uh, had I decided to run and re be reelected this fall, I'd have been a chairman of a committee next term, without any doubt, with a number of legislators who are not seeking reelection or have been voted out. So, uh, but, but yeah, it was tough in the early years that you know replacing Sam. I said I didn't replace Sam. I I I have the 81st district responsibilities. And we'll fill them. We will fulfill them as well as we possibly can. And staff maybe look good. When you were first seated as a freshman member, do you feel that anyone mentored you? I think uh, I have to say this: Matt Ryan mentored everybody. Uh, y you would have had to experience Matt as. Well, for a brief period of time as a minority leader, but then as the Speaker of the House, he was uh, personification. He, 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 you could go to Matt and talk to him and, and, and rationalize things, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Mm -hmm. And it uh, wasn't, wasn't always pleasant. It wasn't always pleasant. But uh, but I'd have to say that about Matt, and I, a few others. I think maybe if I start naming names, I might get in trouble. But uh, one is now a congressman, and who was the chairman of the Appropriations Committee. And we would have discussions. He and I had a lot in common. We we were at that time, I believe, very conservative. Today, I'd have to consider, I, I'm not going to change his position, but I believe I'm more of a moderate. Fiscal matters, I'm still pretty, you know, constrained, but I'm more of a moderate because I've lived. And uh, seeing people fall through the cracks in the safety net in the system that maybe others have not. But. Uh, Would you say there's camaraderie in the House? Yes, there is, um, and I hope I hope it and it and it was very strong. Uh, there have been a few few bumps in the road, <coughs> a few bumps in the road, and I hope 
I hope it doesn't cost too much to fix the bumps in the road and get back on the straight and narrow uh, because it's not quite like it was. And I'll be very matter of fact about it. That's part and partial why I'm not seeking re-election. Uh, things have changed. Mm -hmm. uh, there, I've, I've had some wonderful people. I came in here with 23 Republicans in 1993. And I forget, 14 or 15, we had a large class uh, of Democrats. Uh, and when I came here, I was in the minority for two years. I had never been in a minority in, in politics in my life. It, it, it's a rude awakening, but you know, it served me well. It would serve some of, some of the other legislators well. I wouldn't tell them to want to have to experience it too long. But uh, then you have a better appreciation of of uh, being in the major my, uh, being in the majority, and have a better appreciation for those people who find themselves now in the minority. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, you, you say, "Gee, I I know what that's like." Uh, legislation that you thought was you know, I have first piece of legislation I had took three years. First two years. I don't know whether it ever came back. I mean, it, it, it went into committee. I know it didn't move. It didn't move. And at times, you know, if it was a good piece of legislation and, and the other party thought it was good, why, well, you'd find your bill being introduced by somebody else. That happens. It happens now. It's happening with, the, with our party in, in control. Mm -hmm. uh, it is politics. Mm -hmm. But there have been a few bumps in the road that I hope can be worked out and uh, and people will return to totally good government not thinking about what's it going to take for us to get reelected and what can we do to charge the other side uh, I don't mean charge charge them up uh, find an advantage for the next election now that's also part of politics but at some juncture, somewhere along the way, good government by Republicans and Democrats needs to come to the forefront. It's there. But there are wonderful people here who, who believe that way and want it to happen, but it doesn't always happen. It doesn't always happen. As you prepare to, to leave office, do you feel that you've helped anyone along the way, maybe shown them the ropes? Yeah, I think I have. Uh, you know, I've, 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 I've advised many freshmen. You know, I was a freshman at age 50 when I came here after being 12 years, 11 months as a county commission. Yeah, I think I have uh, in, in, in that you have to have an ego, a big ego, to get here. You've got to believe a lot, you know, that you can not necessarily walk on water, but, uh, yeah, you, it takes a big ego. But once you get here, uh, my short verse was park it. Park it. You know, because there's you know, 203 of you here that have, this, have egos, uh, plus 50 more. And uh, it's best just to sit that in a corner and deal with the real issues and find some friends. So find some real friends who will help you move legislation and give you some thoughts on whether you should introduce this bill this way or another way and, uh, and stay in touch with one another. But uh, yeah, I, th I think, uh, I'm, I'm not gonna name names, some seatmates. Yeah, some seatmates. I had uh, when it, when we were in the minority, but had received an, a, a a Democrat who had chosen to change parties, Mr. Stish. He became my seatmate. I was never so popular in my life, as far as the photo op people because you'd see a camera flash, and I thought, gee, what did I do? Well, it was because of this gentleman to my left <coughs> who was 
who had changed parties and helped us move into the majority, he and a couple others. And then we won it outright uh, later. But, uh, yeah, I, I think enough just to say, yeah, I've, I've, I've passed on to those who want to listen. Mm -hmm. And don't take yourself too seriously down here. Take seriously what you do. I mean, you're, you're creating law that can affect an awful lot of people. And if you do it wrong, you're really hurting a lot of people. And I could give you certain bills that way, but I'll leave those out right now. Mm -hmm. Well, I'd like to talk a little bit about your major pieces of legislation and your issues right now. Could you tell me, um, in your opinion, what were your major issues in legislation? Well, again, from my prior experience as a county commissioner, when you're dealing with children and youth, if some young mother has a child and gives it up at birth, and uh, you, you're dealing with the Children and Youth Agency, or someone, you have a mean-spirited child who ends up in the Children and Youth Program, taking, removed from a home because of home environment. It, it leaves a mark. And uh, so I found myself, the first bill I introduced was uh, dealing with medical, medical history information for adoptees. That came from a family experience. Uh, that w whether it's a private or public adoption, medical history is provided at the time of the adoption. But afterwards, in the intervening years, what if the birth parent, mother, father, something occurs that could seriously affect the life, the, the lifespan, the health of a, of a child, it would be very helpful. Well, rarely is that available. The doctor will say, gee, if we only knew, <coughs> if we only knew. So that was the first bill that I introduced that took three years to get passed. And uh, it, it was altered in some forms. But uh, and Governor Ridge signed the bill that uh, the Department of Health, would, the DPW, would make forms available and there would be a, a repository in the, in the Department uh, of Health as, as to uh, update. A, a person could update their record without dispo, you know, becoming okay. available uh, who, who the birth parent was. I wanted to protect that. I didn't think it would work. And Governor Ridge signed the bill. Governor Ridge has two adopted children. So we had a long conversation about that piece of legislation. I don't think Governor Ridge would say he has adopted children. They are his children. In fact, you'll find that most of, of those who have made adoptions work. Uh, I, I've, another piece of legislation was the uh, updating the county code uh, that had not been worked on for some time and bringing it into the 21st century. Uh, the, the, the auditing requirements and how it should take place and uh, when uh, budgets have to be filed, it changed that. There were various pieces in it, but that took a little work. That took probably two years. And uh, I think the counties wanted it. It was, it was their bill. It wasn't my idea. They were asking if I would introduce such piece of legislation, and we got it passed. Uh, the other that uh, being a fire chief, you know, once you're a brother, sister, fireman, or EMT, paramedic, what, you don't forget. Uh, my predecessor had a military ex background experience. I did not. My fire line was on the fire line, you know. 
So was uh, legislation dealing with uh, House Bill 8 was, I can remember that one, it was the first $25 million grant program for volunteer fire and emergency services. And uh, it's still continuing. Uh, it's not near this year's budget, but some way or another it will happen, uh, I'm told, because we've all been making inquiries. It should have been in. It wasn't a budget. It was taken out of the budget. That's not unusual. Uh, but money for the volunteer firemen, because uh, and and the pays are coming along. There's there's work going on in, the, in that. Let's not say the pay. They they want to be professionals. So okay, uh, they work at it 40 hours a day, probably much more than 40. But th those are the three pieces of major legislation. I've been involved in some others, <coughs> and got some that are working right now. Uh, adult Protection Services uh, bill that I, I'm hopeful will get moving this year, and hopefully get passed this year. Mm -hmm. But I, I'd have to say uh, it, it dealt with children uh, in, in one fashion or another. It dealt with community services. A lot of the community services in one form or another, and and in that regard, uh, fire and safety, uh, th those type of issues. I had the legislation uh, for monies uh, for science and motion, mm -hmm. and in fact, I had the first bill on science and motion. And science and motion was given life uh, uh, some years ago. I think it was ninety. Five that we first took it on, five or four, or, you know, 95, it was in the budget. We got $350,000 for science in motion program. And that was Juniata College where it started and, and one out in Pittsburgh. And I can't remember where it was. Uh, Juniata College is in Huntington, so <laughs> I better not forget that. And uh, it has grown it, where they take the van, these vans. Uh, to the students, to the to the various schools, and uh, now there are 11 colleges or universities that are participating in it, and it's over 200 or 2 million something, and I hope it continues, uh, and I, I'm, I'm sure it will because it, it's 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 doing the right thing, it's exciting the students, you know, about sciences because that was not one of my fortes. And I guess maybe that's, you know, also what made it interesting for me. Hmm. Math, I could understand math. You know, you're either right or you're wrong. And, uh, but science is, uh, is another ball game. But it's, it's beautiful work. I've, I've, and they also, they work with the teachers. Uh, they bring them in to their schools, Juniata's, or uh, Susquehanna, I'm pretty sure has. Uh, but other other colleges, they bring the teachers, science teachers, in and work with them also on the latest techniques. And uh, it, it, it amazes. That's that's a good program. That that's a real good program. It's not it's not wasted money. At least I don't think it's wasted money. And I we're seeing students already who are moving on to college and already in college. And hopefully become professors of. So that that pretty much sums it up, I think. What would you say your hardest uh, legislative issue you ever had to face was? Hardest issue. Yeah. Well, I, I guess. <laughs> it wasn't hard for me, but hearing the other side on two two two, issue, two different things. I'm pro-life, <clears throat> and uh, I am pro-life. My district is pro-life, but I didn't fit. I didn't become pro-life to fit the district. I was pro-life. Just my upbringing, mm -hmm. attitude, you know, about things. And, and, and then therein lies, uh, 
you know, the consequences uh, of the other side, pro-choice. And so, if you're if you're going to if you're going to say no to pro-choice, and children are born, then take a proactive role somewhere, and that's where we get into the adoption process. And uh, so, for me, it was a in 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 dealing with my and and staying with my position and my beliefs. Then, okay, fine. I hear. I know what you're saying. We've got to be proactive on the on the on the other side. Not that every not not that it, all the outcomes are as positive for an adoption. But uh, that's one. And I and I guess. Uh, uh, difficult in that Second Amendment rights, gun ownership. I don't hunt any longer. I used to. Uh, if my family could tell you what I did wasn't called hunting. It was getting out in the woods. <laughs> you know, uh, <coughs> might take a 20, probably the more favorable times was taking a 22 with a scope and do some squirrel hunting and Gene would make squirrel pot pie. But uh, so being a gun owner, not by significant numbers, but I still have the first $6 shotgun I bought off of a, an uncle. And, but being a gun owner and understanding the Second Amendment, at least I thought I do and still believe I do, uh, those who want to take away gun ownership because guns kill people. But it takes someone to discharge a gun to kill people. That somehow or another doesn't always enter into the equation. Uh, and that we were going through legislation dealing with the, uh, what was considered to be uh, assault weapon bans now, I must tell you, I'm thinking to myself, how many, and I have gun collectors, many who are gun collectors, and assault weapon. You know, how many people need an assault weapon? But that's the way it was framed. But when you started to read through the legislation, that assault weapon ban could really reach out and grasp other guns that I knew people in my community owned. And uh, <laughs> this is where I got into a debate with my good friend Matt Ryan uh, over don't sell us down the river, Matt, because Matt had a package of bills himself. There was the Ryan bill. There, there were certain, you know, uh, different legislators who were introducing it. And I think Matt had, was well intended. But I, uh, I not only said that, I pointed a finger at Matt, don't sell, don't send us, sell us down the river. <laughs> Which is not something you you know, uh, first term legislator, second term legislator, should be doing to the, to the uh, speaker of the house or any other or any member for that matter. And uh, we had a discussion, uh, mostly friendly, not all. Uh, so that was that was a trying time, uh, and also there was an impeachment proceedings that went through a judge that you're knowing someone did wrong, uh, but the consequences were going to be a life, a life and a family probably destroyed. I don't mean destroyed from the face of the earth, but as it was, as it was constituted at that time, uh, yeah, major, major changes. Uh, but the right decisions had to be made, and uh, what what Constitution and and all all says, uh, and the person was found to be guilty of, and I don't I don't know that I'm not an attorney, so uh, but yeah, I was part was here when that took place, but I I, I think for the most part the the bills you know the, the action of that I've talked about was most noteworthy and 
yeah, I was part of some budgets where we got money in that that helped my legislative district. That we brought brought some businesses in, uh, some bills that uh, provided uh, ownership, transfer of state prison lands. That uh, you know, I didn't do it on my own. That uh, yeah, the correction said we do have some surplus land. And basically, I was just saying, well, then return it to the entity from which it came, which was the township. And the township, after I forget how many years, finally the land did become theirs. And uh, economic jobs are being created uh, from that action. And uh, most people were very supportive. There were those who were in opposition. But hey, we live in a democracy, you know. Mm -hmm. It's not supposed to be all one way. There, there needs to be give and take. I, I think that's one of the things that needs to be enjoyed here. Mm -hmm. Could you tell me what committees were you involved in and uh, which one did you enjoy the most? Well, I'm trying to think of my first term. I know I was on local government. Mm -hmm. which I'm no longer. I was only on that for uh, one one term, maybe two terms. Um, but right now, let's let's go current. Uh, insurance committee, I've been on it from day one. Made sense. I used to sell insurance for a company. I didn't own it. I, I, I was an agent. And I tried to look out for my policyholders as much or maybe even more than I did the company, which as an agent is not quite the relationship you're supposed to have. But uh, in, in, insurance committee, state government committee that's been very active on a lot of these issues, Veterans Affairs Emergency Preparedness Committee, and aging committee, which fits me rather proper. <laughs> uh, I, and I've, I've had bills come out of all of those. I don't think there's any, any committee. And, and bills that have gone to other, assigned to other committees. Uh, which one? Which one? How did you say that? Did you have a favorite? Do I have a favorite? No, no, I, don't, I can't say that I did. I, I, I was, I was more at ease with the insurance committee because of my background. I had to learn. I, I'm not a veteran, so you know there were there were benefits and t issues being talked about there. But I wanted on that committee because it was also emergency services, mm -hmm. which is fire, police, ambulance, so on and so forth. Uh, uh, st State government, you know, we, we've had some controversial issues, but, uh, uh, you know, election code, well, some changes to the election code. Uh, I, 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 they were all good. I, I can't say that I had a favorite. I was more at ease with insurance. Well, looking at your career, I thought all your committees were very reflective of yeah. who you were and, yeah. in your previous uh, yeah. employment. What aspect of your job as a Pennsylvania House of, House member did you enjoy the most? Well, I have to say it wasn't here. <laughs> it was back home. The district, the district offices. And, and uh, staying in touch with the constituents. <coughs> Session can be a challenge. I'll be, I'll be nice. It, it can be a challenge, especially it can be. It's become more of a challenge with the TV cameras. Uh, we have egos here. I mentioned that earlier, and people like to be seen and heard. And I understand it. I'm, I was. I got up when I had something to say, or I had a bill or an amendment to offer. A lot of my the people back home would say, "Gee, I don't see you on the." on the television. I said, well, if I had something to say, I'd get up. Uh, but I say, I, I, I did my talking in caucus, which people back home 
I think, began to understand what I was saying. I could say more and accomplish more by speaking my piece in the Republican caucus, of which I'm a member. If I was a Democrat, the Democratic caucus. Uh, but I, I just, when I, when I had the opportunity to go to Mifflin County, Huntington County, or Blair County, and, and meet with constituents who had a problem, that I was blessed that my staff had basically fixed the problem by the time I arrived, you know. Uh, but occasionally it was not the, you know, there was sometimes we had problems. The answer they wanted wasn't there, or the legal justification wasn't there. And thank heavens we have a staff here that helps us on that matter, that don't step over the line. You're a legislator. You're a lawmaker. You're not supposed to break laws. So uh, I think uh, that pretty well sums it up. Back home, working in the district offices, going to those banquets at night. Sometimes you say, gee, what am I doing here? I'd like to be at home. But rarely did I feel that way. Rarely did I feel that way. You may have already touched on this, but what did you like the least? Well, the lengthy debate weren't just prolonged, went on and on and on, which had to do with someone having to say the last word. And how, how uh, it, it, it's good and bad, how slowly the process, how the process moves. You know, uh, legislation can take a long time. Now I find that to some degree to be a blessing. You know, there's like 3,500 pieces of legislation normally or more every, in every two-year session introduced. Thank heavens. You know, maybe 250, 300 bills get a chance or more, uh, you know, to be, to be talked about, at least uh, voted upon. I, I, uh, it, was, it was that, and, and the other part of it is, as, as an elected official, it takes, unfortunately, money to run campaigns. And I didn't want it all, you know, like they say, well, let's get it from the political action committees. We always had a small fundraiser once a year back home. And it was so difficult asking people for money, you know, directly, indirectly, but that's what you were doing to run a campaign so I can get back to Harrisburg. Didn't like it. I doubt very much if there's a, there's a handful. <laughs> I don't know how many in the legislature really like that part of the job. Mm -hmm. But you've got to do it. You have to do it. Do you have a fondest memory of serving in the House? Huh. Oh, several. Uh, and Matt had this happen several times. Uh, my father came to this country from Norway, so I'm Norwegian. The Olaf, the IRAO, is Olaf. I haven't been back to the country. My dad I never talked much, as I said, about it. My son and daughter-in-law and the youngest grandson was there, but I need to go there. There's family there. But Matt Ryan wasn't a Norwegian. <laughs> So we, ha we normally, at least once a year, had a dose of Danny Boy. And I'll tell you, uh, the voices that we heard in that chamber and how it was magnified you know, in, in that chamber, the, the tone. Because uh, I still have, I forget, this, is, this one's pretty good yet. Anyhow, I still have a pretty decent ear for musical accomplishments. And uh, <clears throat> we had we had that that occurred on several occasions, thanks to to Matthew. Um, the band of brothers, that was recent. Now I mean, I've, I've watched it on play out on on television, but we had several five, I think, members of the 101st here. We honored them in the chamber of the House of Representatives. 
You know, the, the Second World War, I, I said this in caucus to one time uh, when we were talking about increasing the pace and pace in that program. And some in our caucus thought that was not a, something we Republicans should be doing. That's health, you know, we're, those kind of programs are not, we shouldn't be spending taxpayer dollars. And it went on and on and on and on, and I finally could not hold back, and I asked for the floor. <clears throat> and I said, you know, the very people who are needing our assistance right now are some of the great, one of the greatest nations that this country will ever recall, the Second World War generation. And Korea, I mean, I'm not just talking about one war, but, but, and they need, they're not asking for a, a, that proverbial handout again. They're asking for a hand up. It's sometimes it comes down to medication or or whatever, and the whatever has to play out before the medication does. But increasing the pace and pace net program was necessary. The eligibility requirements. I had people who were falling through the cracks again because. They made 10 or $11 too much. People who came to my office and I, want, I knew one person who was having with cancer treatment, follow-up. You know, that's when the system has to work. And um, that's where I say I'm not a conservative. I am a, a moderate, I must admit, uh, because I, I, I allow those things to play. And I think they need to play because if Government should be last resort, yeah. But uh, in society, we have many people who are in that last resort category. What are your plans upon retirement? I'm retiring from the legislature. I'm not retiring from life. I hope not. I plan on getting involved in some community activities, some. And I don't know, I may find another avocation. I may go in another direction. I don't know yet. I'm not ready for a rocking chair. I've had some health problems that exacerbated this whole thing. And, and, and yeah, that added to the decision. It wasn't the decision maker uh, for why I chose not to run. And neither was the pay raise issue. I'm a big boy. I'm a big boy, <laughs> physically. But I, I, you know, I, I, I was willing to stand up and, uh, and face the, pl the public because I think a lot of the other things that we have done, have accomplished, would have offset. Not totally. Not, not everyone would have for been forgiving. But I think there was sufficient number out there from what we were getting a read who said, okay, you messed up once, don't mess up again because you've done this, 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 and this. But uh, health, did, health did have a little bit of, of play in that also. But I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna get involved in, in, in some things. My, my fire company, I think, wants me to come back and help with bingo like I did for years. And, and I'll, I will, my Lions Club, I haven't been able to do a thing. Uh, activities in, on the volunteer circuit. But I wanna experience Three months. I want three months of retirement. I've been working since I think I was 11 years old, selling papers, you know, whatever. And I, and I was fortunate in my life that I was never unemployed. There were a couple times I was underemployed, <laughs> but I was never unemployed. And uh, I, want, I, want, I want to experience three months of retirement where I can drive like my wife does. You know, she says, I'm retired, sit back and relax. You know, not, not oh my Lord, it's eight o'clock, I need to be wherever. Uh, I want to experience about three months. I think that's about all I'll be able to handle. Mm -hmm. And then I'll be looking for something to do. And I, I have an antique automobile that I'm hoping I can play around with, a uh, 55 Chevy that I, uh, I didn't pay much attention to it for 25 years. It was in the garage, but when I found when I was when the doctor said to me, "You have cancer," 
I said, I need something to look forward to, other than my grandchildren and my wife and, and retirement life. I said, I need something to look forward to. So my son came over, and we dragged the 55 Chevy out of the garage, and I got it on its way to a mechanic, and now it's in a body shop being worked on. And I'm not going to have it ready. I'm not, I don't want it for prizes. I want to drive it. And you're not old enough, but the first time I got into 55, after all these years of driving with power steering and power brakes, I didn't realize what effort it was to, to steer that thing. Now, once it's in movement, it's in motion, it's all right. But I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I can say I want to spend more time with children. They're reared. Uh, I might want to spend more time in their lives in some way, but I don't, I don't know what that means uh, because they have a life to live. Uh, I have two grandchildren. I, I'd like to become... I'd like to be, be as active as I have in the past with them because I, it didn't stop for me. Mm -hmm. Do you think you'll remain active in politics? In some fashion, but not three months. <laughs> not for three months. Yeah, I don't think I could just take a walk away from politics. But, uh, I mean, it's, it's part of me now. Uh, Fourteen years here. 12 years, 11 months back there as a county commissioner, and six, I think, total as a township supervisor. A uh, big part of my life, you know, other than, town, other than insurance and, and furniture, you know. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll be some way or another involved in it. And I, and I hope for a few years following this, I might have something to share. Mm -hmm. Then the, you know, then the longer you're removed from the action, I'll have less to share. Okay. But well, that's my last question. What would you like to, uh, if you would have any advice for new members that would be starting their careers in the House? Don't make too many promises. Promises made are not easily kept. That was advice that was given to me by a former county commissioner when he found out I wanted to be a county commissioner. He said, Larry, the press will be after you to make, what's your agenda? What do you, what do you stand for? And he says, you'll want to rattle off this and that. He says, be careful. Making promises is easy. Keeping them becomes somewhat difficult. Now, I see that with members on both sides of the aisle when you read their literature, campaign literature. They're making an awful lot of promises. Sincerely, sincerely, but I don't think it takes that. I think if, you know, two, three, four issues, as you say, this is this, 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 and then go at it, and hopefully at least complete half of it quickly, and then the next half takes a little bit longer period of time to get accomplished. But, uh, and, and uh, the last piece you may not like, I've shared this with a lot of, uh, and I don't always follow it myself. I'm not following it right at this moment. When you're dealing with the, me with the media, they want comments. They want sound bites. They can't fault you for what you don't say. That's it. Okay. Well, thank you very much. This concludes our thank interview you. today. Thank you.